Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today, the last day of these two weeks, talking about the greatness of God. And I hope during this time you have seen some things you hadn't seen before, or at least thought some thoughts you hadn't thought before. It's almost impossible. Well, it is impossible to grasp the greatness of God. But we can certainly try, and we can start doing that by doing the things I've talked about for these two weeks. And then the last time in this series, this last place I want to mention, comes from John, chapter 14. And this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, three in one, the Trinity as we call it, and, and I'm not going to try to explain that here. In fact, I don't even really know if I can. It's simply man's attempt to make sense out of how this works with God. And, you know, our minds are limited. There's only so much that we can comprehend. But now this one is really simple, and it talks about the greatness of God. John 14, 27. Jesus said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is the, a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or be afraid. I focus on this last greatness of God which has nothing to do with the universe around us, but has to do with what's inside of us. Now, you and I both know that life, well, it has its problems. Ever since we came into this world, most of us came in screaming. Some of us might even go out screaming. But in between, we have lots of experiences. Some of them are joyful, some of them are not so joyful. Some of them are life-changing. Some of them are just the next step in going through this journey. But you, like me, have experienced life at least up to the point to where we are now. And I assure you, there'll be more experiences yet to come. Uh, I'm reaching a point in my life where I know that my work days are, are going to be numbered. I'm not a youngster anymore. And I know that I will sometime in the future reach another phase. Uh, and, and, and I'm looking forward to what God's going to do during that time. And this passage here, helps me look forward to it, and will help you wherever you are in this journey called life. John says, Jesus record, he records Jesus' words and says, I'm leaving you a gift. Now, one thing about a gift is you have to accept it. I know a lot of people that can't accept people helping them. Now, they claim that they're just not comfortable with it. And I suppose they're not. And I don't want to judge anybody's motives. But I just want to say that receiving is a lot harder than giving. And sometimes receiving means that I'm not up to it. I, I pay a fella to help around the yard. I used to do all that myself. I can't quite do that anymore. My, my knees <laughs> aren't like they once were. And some of you know what that means. And I have to receive his help in order to get the task done. Jesus says, I'm giving you a gift. But you have to receive it. And what is the gift? Peace of mind and heart. Now, what is peace? 
Well, the, it's the absence of strife. It's the conviction that this is what I should be doing. It's the being able to sit down in the midst of all the noise around us and say, okay, I know what God wants. And that's the gift that this magnificent God offers to you and to me. And Jesus goes on to say it, it's a gift that the world can't give. You can't get it any other way. I don't care how many financial resources you have, you can't buy peace. I don't care how much you've done for yourself, there will come a day when you can't. There just comes a day when you have to be dependent on somebody else. And God says, I want you to be dependent on me. I don't know where you are in life. I don't know whether you walk closely with God or whether you walk kind of iffy with God or whether you don't walk with God at all. I know lots of people in all three categories. But all three categories are the people that God is speaking to here. He said, the world can't give it. Only God can. And this gift of peace is so incredible. Let me read, put my glasses on so I get it straight. So, giving the peace, accepting the peace, receiving it. Peace I give you. So, you, me, everyone listening, don't be troubled or afraid. Now, I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. There are times in their lives when they've been afraid. And if there aren't times, there are going to be times. And at that moment, we can rest. I remember when I had my heart surgery. I knew they were going to do some incredible stuff with my heart. But I wasn't anxious. And I wasn't afraid. Because I knew that God had led me to a good surgeon. And I knew that God was in control. Now, my wife probably was worried. <laughs> and if it had been reversed, maybe I would have been. But I wasn't. And I remember climbing up on that table without a care in the world, except maybe for another warm blanket. <laughs> if you've ever had surgery, you'll know about that one. But you see, the magnificence of God is so incredible. He's also including you and your welfare and your psychological, emotional, and spiritual health and his plans for this creation. I hope you'll think about that. I hope you have a good weekend. I'll be back next week with another topic. If you have a need or a concern, call us. We'll do anything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. So until Monday, God bless you. I'll talk to you again.